Hey there, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a very exciting haul for you guys because it's quite likely that this is my last haul of 2020. If this is later than the date I post this and you see another haul, I lied, but I think it's likely that it will be. And the fact that it can include two Maison Lake Home fragrances is so, so exciting. We will get straight into it. I have three fragrances all together to talk to you guys about, but if you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, like this video, all that good stuff, so you'll be notified every time I put out a new video, and we will get into it. So like I said, I have two Maison Lancomes. Both are blind buys. I'm gonna leave them for last. I'm gonna start with the fragrance that I actually picked up at Chopper's Drug Mart. It's our Canadian drugstore. We have like this whole perfume section and there's always uh, perfumes to get there. And this one for my Canadian followers out there is on sale right now in select shoppers. So if you can find it, it's been reduced, not in the 1999 section, but it's been quite a bit reduced in both sizes and we'll just get started. So that one is DKNY Nectar Love and it was there in the 50 mil and the 100 mil and the 100 mil was only $10 more. So I had to get it and I'd heard really nothing about this. Like I'd never, I might've seen a photo here and there, but I haven't really heard anything about it. And on the back, it says that the heart of DKNY Nectar Love is an exclusive natural attraction extract of honeycomb and neroli, irresistible, intoxicating, and addictive. And I was drawn to it in particular, other than the fact that it was on sale, in particular because it, it was described as having the most strong and authentic bees wax scent and note. Um, so I was intrigued and it has nectarine, solar notes, yellow freesia, orange, grapefruit, mirabelle plum, which we'll see, jasmine, lily of the valley, beeswax, vanilla, musk, um, and cedar. And I am intrigued. I want to see because the beeswax was in the base of the notes, but everyone was really saying that that's kind of what they were getting. Oh, and neroli, sorry, obviously there's neroli in this. Um, they were saying that it was very prominent of a beeswax note and obviously honey, but beeswax in particular. So I'm intrigued to see whether it's super waxy and you can actually get that beeswaxness in the fragrance and whether it actually shows up as a note that I can pick up. Um, also what intrigued me was the comments on this are very divided, very on Fragrantica. There are people that truly were ripping this apart, like it gave them headaches, it's gross, they can't stand it, they just got a sample and they can't imagine wearing it again, and there are people that love it. Um, so it just, it seemed like a risk worth taking. It's a pretty cute bottle, it's very, I mean, it's like simple enough and it's kind of reminiscent of what I feel like Marc Jacobs would have for his bottles because it's, you know, with the bees, it just reminds me of kind of Dot and Bumblebee or whatever, Honey by Marc Jacobs. So whatever, I don't mind. I will just spray this one here. I'm so intrigued by this fragrance. Ooh, wow, this smells I have to spray some more. I am already very surprised. I did not expect it to smell the way it does. Okay, let me get my nose on it again. Okay, straight off the bat, guaranteed this smells like a hair, hair care product I have used before. I can't recall which one, probably one with honey, but I'm definitely getting it. It is like honey, but in a hair care product way and it's it's syrupy without being like a dark syrupy it's definitely got that honey but it's got like a conditioner type smell and i was worried about the mirabelle plum because plum plums in general like any type of plummy fragrances are i have to be careful with them i'm not always a fan but this one isn't it's not going weird in a way, at least upon first impressions, to my nose. And I don't really get a waxiness, I'll be honest. But, but I can see 
if if what I'm smelling is the beeswax, then I see what they meant. I envisioned waxiness to be a little bit more, uh, I don't know, like textured and plasticky. But this smells, it smells uh, less like, I don't know, a little bit more subdued than that. It doesn't smell, I can't imagine this being something that gave people headaches and heady, because it doesn't smell heady to me at all. It smells like honey and some florals and conditioner. And I suppose a little bit of honey and beeswax, but had I not known that there were bees, there was beeswax in this as a note, I wouldn't necessarily think honeycomb. I would think honey, but honeycomb is just so I don't, sticky and syrupy and thick. And this isn't, this isn't that for me. I don't know. It's a little bit lighter. Wow. Okay. I'm actually pretty pleased. I definitely don't have a fragrance in my collection that smells like this. And it's not as, I don't know, thick and uh, syrupy and heady. Like the comp, the comments that made it seem like it was so hard to wear and too much to take. I'm not getting at all. Again, this is a first impressions. I'll always report back in one of my second impressions videos and let you guys know. Maybe this will be one that totally flips on me like it did for many people in the comments and is just unwearable. But at this point, it kind of just smells like honey conditioner with some florals. So yeah, that is Nectar Love by DKNY. All right, so now we get to the Maison Lancome fragrances. I think after these two, I definitely have to do, and you guys have recommended that I do this video on all of my Maison Lancome fragrances. I don't think I've done it yet. I'm not sure now, I feel like I'm blanking, but I don't think I've done it yet. So now with these, I have a good collection on my hands and I'll do a video on all of them. If you guys are interested, let me know. But I picked up two of the Oud ones that I didn't have. I have had L'Autre Oud for a very long time now, and then I picked up another Oud, which is Oud Bouquet, arguably the most famous of the three, and the one I'd heard about the most before I ever started making uh, videos on YouTube, and I was just watching. This is the one I just kept hearing time and time again. In the old packaging, people were just enamored with it. And I've never smelled it. I have tried in like a, um, not a sample, but just those like purse spray size from Be Layered uh, ages ago when they sent it to me. And I lost it. I completely lost it. I have no idea where it is. And I'm not especially sad because it wasn't, there's something about Be Layered fragrances. There's like a note in it where they all have, they'll smell differently obviously, but they all have this like element to them that smells the same. And it's so hard to pinpoint and explain that unless you've smelled it, and some of you have. But I felt like it didn't do well with the oud. Um, it just, that element, I felt like, it just made it normal. Um, more normal than I thought. It lasted a very long time. The lasting power was great. And the first few wears, I wasn't noticing it. But once I started wearing a couple of the samples that I had, I realized they all have this similarity. So... It's something to do with those fragrances that have that. And I know, obviously, Maison Lancome won't have it. But I wish I didn't lose it because it wasn't horrible by any means. I just wanted to be able to compare them and see actually if, you know, I'd never smelled this. Maybe that's just something they have completely in common and it's a perfect dupe and then I could have told you guys. But anyways, long story short, I got Oud Bouquet and that has saffron, rose petals, vanilla, and praline and obviously Oud. And this is in the newer packaging, which is great because most of my fragrances, except for L'Autre Oud, which is in the old packaging, and I kind of like it that way. Um, I don't know why, I really like the old packaging of L'Autre Oud, but all the new ones are like this. And I've heard um, from one of you, actually you let me know, that there's even newer packaging to this and I don't like that packaging. So, oh, okay. Scent memory wise, I feel like this smells similar to that B layered one. Um, 
I wish I had it. If I ever find it, I will, by the time I do a second impressions on this, I will definitely let you guys know side by side comparison. But based on memory, they smell quite similar. I feel like there was a good job done. This is definitely like the quintessential rosy oud. And maybe because I'd smelled that be layered version, I was a little bit more prepped to know what this would smell like. It wasn't like a full, full blind buy. But I do like it. It's definitely sweeter and more gourmand than L'Autre Oud. The reason I love L'Autre Oud is because I feel like it's not playing it safe in any way, uh, trying to be like super sweet and with praline and it has rose, but it's not playing it safe. It is an Oudi fragrance. And this is a way more, I think like mass marketable Oud fragrance. Not saying it's not beautiful because it is, and I will 100% wear it and love wearing it, but it, it's like a distinction for you guys to know because I do know some of you are not as well versed in Oud and want to start getting into it. I've said before, I don't think you should start with a fragrance like L'Autre Oud or a Bitter Oud or like a dirty, very woody, almost masculine oud, I think uh, it might be too hard for the average person to just jump straight into that. I just adore oud um, and I'm, I've am i been accustomed to Middle Eastern type fragrances, so I'm gonna have a different type of feeling and I kind of like all of them, but this is definitely way more marketable of a nude fragrance. It's very rosy and gourmand, as I said. So yeah, really nice. Again, if I ever find that sample, I will do a belayered comparison for you all. But based on nose memory, they they smell. I feel like they did a good job because they smell pretty similar. Obviously, there's going to be better performance probably because these Maison Lancome fragrances are incredible. Um, and the bottles are stunning, but yeah. So then the other one is Oud Ambrosie. And this one is also obviously a nude fragrance, but it has honey, rose, cedar, and patchouli. And this one also has been discontinued from what I remember. It's a little bit harder to find. Um, and I was really happy to get my hands on it. And here it is. Again, beautiful, always with the side with the etching and then their name. I just, I really, really love these bottles. There's something about it. So we will spray on this side. And see what it's like oh wow there's definitely already I'm getting patchouli but it's um it kind of smells like a candied patchouli if that makes any sense I know that's crazy and that's not really possible but maybe it's the honey because it's definitely not the rose or the cedar but it's it there's a patchouli in there that usually is a bit iffy for me just like plums but it's it's candied like it's definitely sweet again gourmand most of the maison lancomes that i've had anyways are like gourmand takes on whatever the fragrance is this is quite gourmand this is really interesting it's kind of also a bit very very small but it's smelling a bit sour to me like a bit tart. Yeah, this one's interesting. Again, way different uh, than L'Autre Oud and um, Oud Bouquet. And I would say Oud Bouquet is still the easiest to dip your toes into. For me personally, this is seeming to be a harder one or at least I would say this is kind of harder to get into than even L'Autre Oud personally. Just because of that sour, like it's a bit tart. It started out a bit more of that candied patchouli, but now I feel like I'm getting a bit more of that like cedar, woody. I don't know what that tartness is. The Oud in this is very different as well. So that's Oud Ambrosie. And we always, here on my channel, like to put my hauls in order of what I'm most looking forward to wear. And honestly, okay, it's very, very close. I feel like season-wise, I don't know. 
I think it's fair to say Eau d'Ambrosie right now, or sorry, that's a bouquet. Eau d'Ambrosie is third place. There, I have to play around with it some more. I'm not saying I don't like it. It's nice. But it is, it's definitely more complex and interesting and tart than I was expecting. So I'll have to play around with it some more and see how I really feel. Right now I'm in like a very experimental phase with it. I'm still making up my mind. In terms of Oud Bouquet, which is really beautiful now as it's settling in and the Nectar Love, I like them quite equally, which is strange to say, just because Nectar Love has really surprised me. But I think season-wise, I would say this is in second place. It's a little bit safer. It's, you know, it smells like honey conditioner. And it's a little bit more kind of like an all-season, maybe spring type fragrance. Um, but I do like it. And right now, it's impressed me more than Oud Ambrosie, if I'm being honest, upon first impressions. But... First place I would give to Oud Bouquet. I totally get why there's hype around this. I think at this point there's so many Oud fragrances that are even mass marketable that maybe the, the I don't know, the hype has died down a little bit compared to where it was. But uh, based on first impressions, it is really nice. Like I feel like it's a really nice one, even though it's a little bit safer than Oud Ambrosie or even L'Autre Oud or other Oud fragrances, it's a nice take. It's a really nice rosy gourmand praline type take on it and it really is beautiful. So I think I picked up the wrong one but Oud Bouquet in first, Nectar Love in second and then Oud Ambrosie in third and of course I will be back at a certain point down the road with my second impressions on all these and any fragrances I've hauled. Let me know in the comments below which one of these you've tried or that you'd like to try. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!